In this video, we give a little primer on how to um, do unit conversion in a safe, simple, and effective way, um, and then we apply that to calculating the speed of light in a unit that you may or may not be familiar with. So we'll start with something really basic. Uh, right in the US, um, we don't use kilometers, um, at least not in our daily lives so much, uh, but we use miles. So let's say we have a distance of 10 miles, and we want to express that in terms of kilometers. Well, the first thing we need to know is how many, um, how many uh, kilometers are there in a mile. And so we have the uh, conversion factors um, that you can look up or you might just remember. Um, and for kilometers and miles, it's 1.6 kilometers is equal to one mile. Okay, And this is an interesting thing because um, if I then divide both sides by one mile, I have 1.6 km for kilometers divided by one mile. And on the right-hand side, I just have one, right? Because one mile divided by one mile is one. And you remember that um, if you multiply anything by one, you don't change that thing. So 10 miles times one is 10 miles. So the whole um, idea surrounding unit conversion is just a creative multiplication by one, in which case you don't actually change the quantity, you just change the, the clothing or the dressing or the description of that quantity. So what's another way that we can write one? Well, here's another way that we can write one. 1.6 kilometers divided by one mile is equal to one. So I should just be able to replace the number one here with 1.6 kilometers over one mile. And let's see what I, what I get when I do that. Well, if I multiply and divide by mile, that cancels. And so then I have 10 multiplying 1.6, and I end up with a number 16. But it's not just a number 16. It's a number with units. And those units are the only remaining unit in the problem. And that would be kilometers, because the miles have been canceled. So I end up with 16 kilometers. So. Um, what we have is 10 miles is equal to 16 kilometers. So now I know how to convert miles to kilometers and so on. Um, let's say we wanted to convert um, 10 miles per hour into um, kilometers per hour. Okay, well, that's actually the same process. We do 10 miles per hour, and we want to multiply it by a creative factor of 1, such that we're left with kilometers per hour. So that means we want to get rid of the miles. In order to get rid of the miles, I need to put something down here that's in units of miles. And in order for kilometers to appear in the numerator, I have to have kilometers in the numerator up here. But I have the constraint that this term has to equal 1. And since 1 kilometer does not equal 1 mile, I can't just put a 1 up and, and bottom. I have to use a number in those blue parentheses that equals 1. So that number would be uh, 1.6 divided kilometers divided by 1 mile. And when I multiply this out, um, as designed, the miles cancel. I'm left with kilometers an hour. And then I just do the multiplication of the numbers. 10 times 1.6 divided by 1, well, that is 16. So, oh, I don't know why I did it in red. That was strange. Um, so 10 miles is 16 kilometers. And indeed, 10 miles per hour is 16 kilometers per hour. So that's the basic of Unix conversion. Um, let's now apply this Unix conversion idea to the speed of light. OK, so speed of light. And if you look up the speed of light in um, standard units that are used in physics, like meters and seconds or kilometers and seconds, you'll find that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, And we will abbreviate meters per second as m divided by s. Okay. Now, in this course, we are not going to use the number expressed in this form. 
um, because we're going to be um, focusing mostly on the, the physics and it turns out to be much more convenient to have a, a smaller number for our calculations than 3 times 10 to the 8th. And just to be clear, 10 to the 8th is, um, is a 1 with 8 zeros after it, so 3 times 10 to the 8th will be a 3 with 8 zeros after it. So 300, um, 300 million meters per second. Right, so that's a very large number. Um, I'm going to do a conversion of this number into a different unit. So let's, um, might seem strange, but we're going to go into feet, and then we'll see what happens. Um, so we want to convert um, meters to feet. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do that. 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So just like when we converted miles to kilometers, we need to know the conversion factor. So what is the conversion factor for um, factor for meters to feet? Okay, um, so that you can just look up, or if you may know it, um, but one meter is a little more than three and a quarter feet. Okay, so again, what does that tell us? Our fancy way of writing 1 is now going to be 3.28 feet divided by 1 meter. So we can convert meters to feet by multiplying by this factor of 1, 3.28 feet over meter. And I know that I wanted to do feet over meter rather than meters over feet because my goal was to cancel the meters, which I've done. So now I'm left with feet per second. <laughs> Okay, so what does this end up being? Well, oh, colors going all over the place. That's red. How about black? Okay, 3 times 10 to the 8th times 3.28 um, is going to be a number that's very close to 10 times 10 to the 8th, right? 3 and a third, roughly, times 3 is about 10. Okay. Well, 10 times 10 to the 8, and again, this is units of feet per second, is um, equal to 10 to the 9. Remember, if you have, um, when you multiply numbers that have the same base, you add their exponents. So this is 10 to the 8 plus 1, or 10 to the 9. The units haven't changed. It's still feet per second. So... Um, and, I should have started in the very beginning by saying this is the speed of light. So all of these are C. C is our symbol for the speed of light. Okay. So my, I said before that I want to go from a very large number, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, to a smaller number. Well, I've made it bigger, haven't I? I now have 10 to the 9 in these units of feet per second. But that's okay. Instead of doing feet per second, I can change second to a different unit of time. Um, and a convenient unit of time here would be the nanosecond. Right? And as you may know from other um, situations or other contexts, nanosecond, that prefix nano, is 10 to the minus 9, or 1 billionth of a second. So I can now do another conversion here, multiplying by a fancy 1, where 1 second is equal to 10 to the 9 nanoseconds. And this is where the real payoff happens, right? Because my seconds cancel, I'm left with feet per nanosecond. And look at this, 10 to the 9 in the numerator, 10 to the 9 in the denominator. So those actually cancel also. Um, the numbers 10 to the 9 cancel. And what am I left with? Well, I'm left with 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So we end up with feet per nanosecond for our unit. And this super nice, convenient numerical value for the speed of light, one foot per nanosecond. Okay. Now, really, strictly speaking, I should put a little squiggle on top of this equal sign, because it's not exactly equal to 1.00000, but it's approximately one foot per nanosecond. It's um, certainly within a few percent of that number, and the approximation that we made came when we multiplied 3 by 3.28 and called that 10. Okay, so the, to the extent that that is not accurate, then this number will differ from 1. 
In this course, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to use this number of one foot per nanosecond as our speed of light. Okay, and that will simplify a lot of our calculations in terms of like actually turning the algebraic crank and not having to deal with scientific notation um, without sacrificing anything on the physics side. We're still going to be doing accurate relativity calculations. Um, we're just going to simplify the algebra by making by working on these units of feet per nanosecond. So although most physicists um, across the world um, tend to use um, SI units of meters, kilograms, and seconds, in this course, uh, we're going to actually use feet and nanoseconds. Um, so that may be a bit of a change for, for those of you who have taken physics before, but the, the whole goal and motivation of doing this in feet per nanosecond for the speed of light is to keep all of the calculations simple so that we can focus on the physics and not get bogged down in scientific notation and doing calculations um, with large, large numbers. So that wraps up our primer on unit conversion, multiplying by fancy ways of saying one, and um, has kind of established a value for the speed of light that we will use throughout this course.